Now, I know what you're thinking. You probably clicked on this video because there are so many better tools to build a TUI with. Or you might say, if I'm this desperate to do something with C, I should just make something simple, like a hash map. But no, I have the compulsive need to go big or go home. I chose to completely re-implement my favorite to-do app to Todoist in the terminal, and yes, I knew this exists already. I hadn't used C in about two years, and instead of getting warmed up to it with a few easy leak code problems, I dove directly into the deep end. So what's the big problem with C then? It's supposed to be this beautifully crafted, logical, low-level language. Wait, oh, hold on, there's the problem, it's a low-level language. With C, this doesn't just mean you control your program's memory, seg vault after seg vault after seg vault, this means you control everything yourself. And yes, this applies to everything. Try creating a JSON object with only one value in it, that'll be about 20 lines of code. But that isn't the fault of C, of course, that's how it's meant to work, it just means that the most menial features take hours to complete. So, with all that being said, let's dig into the libraries used to make this to you why, what they do, and their biggest pain points, and curses. If you've ever worked with C before, this is likely a name that scares you a little bit. Don't get me wrong, and curses was amazing for its time, which was about 30 years ago. Every state change, every update to the UI, down to the exact row and column is up to you to handle. And how exactly does it work, you ask? Well, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that I certainly don't understand, but generally speaking, Ncurses maintains something of a buffer that tracks the state of the currently used Ncurses window, which in this case refers to the Ncurses buffer and not a window on your desktop, and then allows you to efficiently render and update that buffer and consequently re-render it to your terminal window by using Refresh. Ncurses also provides a bunch of out-of-the-box tools like menus and forms, similar to those that you would find in HTML and JavaScript. But as with anything else C-related, you, the programmer, are expected to handle and deal with the guts of each of these tools. For instance, it takes about 50 lines of C and Ncurses to render a simple menu, and don't even get me started on how one would make this menu actually reactive. The second big library that I use is CJSON. Now, I don't know if this really falls under the definition of a library for C. It's a single file, but it is about 5,000 lines, and probably about 25% of my code involved. CJSON, so I'm counting it as a quote-unquote important library. Now, the other really big library that I use for this TUI is libcurl. And yes, libcurl is the library behind curl. As with ncurses, it's a wonderful library that requires you to do everything yourself. Try making some headers. That'll be about four function calls. Try making some post fields. Okay, well, bring in CJSON and do it yourself. Again, libgrl is a wonderful tool. It's just a large step in a different direction from making an API request in something like Python or JavaScript. Finally, I want to mention documentation. If you've ever used a more modern language, framework, or library, which most of you probably have, you're probably used to really beautiful, interactive, and consistently updated documentation. Take React, for example. Almost every page has a small built-in tutorial as well as a font and font size that's completely optimized for reading. But that's not the case for anything involving NCURS or libcurl. Ncurses doesn't even have a dedicated site. There's one hosted by Pradeep Padala, I think at least, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, and another hosted by Thomas Dickey, who as far as I know is the current maintainer of Ncurses. While these sites are awesome, you're really expected to work off of man Ncurses, which is not wrong, so to speak, it's just vastly different from what I'm used to. And as I said, you can also take a look at the libcurl docs as another example. Again, there's nothing inherently wrong with them, it's just vastly different from what I'm used to. Lots of walls of text, and lots of here's some info, good luck kind of documentation. Anyways, before we dive into the code itself, I want to answer one really important question. Why would I do this to myself? I'm sure this is something that's come to your mind. As I previously mentioned, there are so, so, so many better options out there when it comes to making a TUI. You could do something in Rust, Python, or really any language, even JavaScript. Well, I've spent the last five months of my life working on by AI, and after 500 commits, I feel tired. There's not really a better way to describe it. The last half of those commits didn't involve me learning anything or doing anything new, just copying and pasting information from my brain. I wanted a break, and since I had a teensy bit of previous experience with C, I wanted to do something with it. Also, I felt a little bit of imposter syndrome, because a lot of the tools that I used to build by AI were kind of just handed to me. I don't have to think about the gritty details of security when I'm using React. I don't have to write raw SQL when I'm using Django. I don't even have to think about how to structure my code and project. Django is opinionated in that it's built to be used with a model view template architecture. Anyways, all that is absolutely terrific and wonderful, and don't get me wrong, these tools are the reason why we have what we have today. You can learn Django in a few months and whip up a delightful website without having to worry about how the hell your code handles an HTTP request, how it officially interacts with your database, or how the Flubaflor triggers a flubal gas. But sometimes you just want to go back and prove to yourself that you can do what is being done for you. And while a TUI written in C certainly does not do what Django does, it helps to get rid of that nasty lurking feeling. And with all that out of the way, here's how it works. 
Just as a quick disclaimer, I am a beginner in C, and consequently I'm sure there's some awful code that could be completely improved or changed, and honestly I'm sure that there are some memory leaks, and yes, I am aware of Valgrind, so please don't use this video to start learning C. Also, I'll cover the first part of the program in a lot of depth, but I won't do so for the rest of the program. That would just be way too much information. I just want to cover the first few lines so you can get a good gist of how Incurses and Libperl is supposed to work. Okay, so starting off, I should also take a moment to explain how to do his functions. It has projects and to-dos, also known as tasks or items and those tasks can be put into projects. Those tasks can also have a due date, and if the due date is today, they're displayed in the Today tab. So with that, the first major step is to grab the list of projects from the API, display them to the user, and let the user choose what project they want to view, specifically including the Today tab. Naturally, we start with the main function. We initialize ncurses in this blob of code, and initialize a curl handle with the curl easy init function. Because this is C, we have to check and see, pun intended, if the handle initialized properly. If it did, we continue with our program. Next, we get the auth token from the environment. This could certainly be done with a config file somewhere in the home directory or .config, but as I'll mention later, my primary objective with this program is simply to have a proof of concept and prove to myself that I can actually make a functional TUI. Anyways, after we grab this token, we slap it into a curl S list, which is basically just an HTTP header that will add to the request in just a second. Then we create the URL with one of my helper functions. Finally, we get around to actually making the request. This is one of my structs called curl args, and it just contains all of the essential stuff to make HTTP requests to a REST compliant API. If you're unfamiliar, REST is kind of just a general API standard that generally supports get post, put, and delete requests. Now, what about the make request function? This is one of my functions and it makes about 50 lines of code nice and reusable. If we take a look inside, we can see that it just sets a bunch of options for the curl handle, which is basically just options for the request we're about to make, makes the request, and then handles the output. Now, I want to make one thing very clear while we're here. We use the same curl handle throughout our entire program. That means that we need to manually set or clear every field every time we make a request. Otherwise, we're going to end up with fields that simply aren't what they should be. And yes, libcurl's documentation does recommend this, as it seems to be a lot more efficient to do this rather than create a new curl handle every single time we make a request. Anyways, back to the main function. Once we make the request and use cjson to gather the data from it, we add one more field manually called today. This is because of to do is today section that I find myself using like 99% of the time, but their API doesn't count it as an actual project. Once we have that, we render the project's menu. But don't forget, simply rendering a menu doesn't mean that the user can actually see the menu. We need to call refresh in order to actually display the menu to the screen. And finally, we start what I somewhat appropriately call an event loop. This while loop runs until the user presses Q, which then causes the program to exit. Oh, and when that happens, there's a whole bunch of cleanup that has to be done, of course. So let's see what we have. Oh, that's it. Yeah, again, for the 30th time, we're working with C here, which means that we're doing the heavy lifting, so there's not much to see yet. Anyways, what's actually happening with this thing that I labeled as an event loop? Well, firstly, we of course need to have Vim bindings. If the user presses K or J, the menu will go up or down respectively, but that's not the meat of the topic. The really important stuff happens when the user presses L. This is the equivalent of opening a Todoist project and viewing the tasks inside it. Our code does this with Todoist API and calls one really important function, project panel. You can think of this as a copy of the main function. What it does is it makes a new end cursor window, which means that there's now another buffer for ncurses to write to. You can kind of think of this like a pop-up, except for the fact that it takes up the entire screen. Then, as I just said, it does something very similar to what the main function does. It calls the Todoist API and slaps the results into a menu. There's a lot going on here, so I want to make a few notes. Firstly, we're going to need the data from each respective task, specifically the content, the ID, and the priority number. We have access to this data when we call render menu from JSON, which naturally renders a menu from JSON. Then, in this function, we do a few different things. If there's nothing in the given JSON, on, we create a so-called blank array of elements and return it. If there is something there, we call create items from JSON and return a menu with those items. Now, in regard to the data from each respective task, we need to store it somewhere. So how do we do so? Well, when we create an uncurses menu with create items from JSON, we're only given two fields to fill out, but we can use the user pointer function to store quote unquote metadata for each menu item. Now, this took me way too long to figure out, and I'm still not sure if I'm doing it completely correctly, but here's how I'm doing it. You do also have to free this when you get rid of the menu, which isn't that hard to do, but it should be noted. Okay, that was a lot. Let's take a look at some visuals of how this works. So, when the user presses L, the Todoist API is called and relevant tasks are grabbed from the response. These tasks are then rendered in a panel, or that a panel is basically just another ncurses window, and rendered into a menu with render menu from JSON, which calls create items from JSON, which adds metadata to each item. And finally, we're at the point where we can manage single tasks. 
we see an event loop here very similar to that of main, except for a few differences. If the user presses H or Q, the event loop will end, closing the panel and taking the user back to the main menu, also known as the projects menu. If they press P, the program will close the current task, which is basically just marking it as not due until the next day. If they press O, the task will be reopened, naturally this is the inverse of closing a task, and finally if they press D, the task will be permanently deleted after confirmation, of course. On a slight tangent, I want to take this time to again mention how much heavy lifting we're doing here. Take a look at how the 10 lines of JSON for the API request for updating the to-do date of a task is made. It's about 70 lines, maybe. And really, that's not even the worst of it. Just another glaring reminder of the niceties of modern languages, and as I try to remind people, say thank you to open source maintainers. Most languages are open source, and programming would suck if the majority of languages were proprietary. Anyways, those functions are great and all, but they aren't all that intricate. All that they involve is taking an item's previously mentioned metadata, using it to call an API, and updating the item slash menu if necessary. So let's take a look at something that's a bit more intricate, creating a task. We need to prompt the user for a task, and then create it, and manually append the new task onto the updated list. List of items. The prompting and appending are the fun parts here, so let's take a deeper dive into that. Firstly, we need to get the input from the user. We can do so with a very nice out-of-the-box ngcursus tool called fields. With this, we can pretty easily gather input data from the user. Do note that I'm using my own helper function here called display input field. It does exactly what the name suggests. Displays an input field, gathers data, and returns the data when it's done. So we add a bit of styling to the form and then render it. This is where things get a bit weird, and to be completely frank, I don't think this is the intended way of doing things. If the user presses backspace, we update the field accordingly, and if the user presses a key other than enter, we again update the field accordingly. You'll also notice that we maintain our own string of data. Once the user presses enter, we send this data back to the function it was originally called from, which is create task. Then, as we've done about 16 times before, we make an API request and create this task. But now we have to manually update the list of items. Now, I think there might be a more efficient way to do this with realloc, but look, this is what I'm rolling with for the moment. Finally, we're able to return this new array of items and update the menu. Now, with that, we're kind of done. We've covered all of the really nasty and interesting stuff, and we've successfully created a working TUI, even though it might not look that good. On that note, what else can we do to make this look better? Well, there's one main thing that comes to mind, and that's color. Unfortunately, coloring an cursed menu is a pain at best, and even then, you're really not able to separately color that much, so I chose to leave everything unstyled and leave the customization up to the terminal emulator itself. In other words, transparency and stuff. Now, with all that being said, this program is not intended for general use. It's a proof of concept, if anything. If you want a TUI for Todoist, there are plenty of better options. There's one written in Rust, which is actively maintained and sits at a healthy 1.5 thousand stars, and I'm sure you could find others if you look around enough. With that being said, I don't plan to improve this any further. If this is something that you, for some reason, really want to see grow, please feel free to fork it and work on it in your own time. My next video will likely be something about refactoring my god-awful two-year-old code, not improving this program any further. So, if you want to see that, subscribe. And if you don't, don't subscribe, I guess. Peace.